four months or just maybe a, a single year, right? Is there any way that we can do that without violating what I call the 11th commandment of physics, thou shalt not exceed the speed of light, kind of the cosmological speed limit? Uh, it turns out that within general relativity, uh, there are two loopholes uh, that we can use to actually go somewhere very quickly while adhering to that cosmic speed, li speed limit. Uh, one is the idea of a wormhole. I'm not going to talk to you guys about that today. And the other is the idea of a space warp, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about today. Now, a space warp works on the principle that you can expand and contract space at any speed that you want. This is a loophole within general relativity. And we know that inflation is a very real phenomenon because when we look at the light uh, that comes to us from stars very, very far away, we see that light is having a redshift, and that's evidence of the fact uh, that the space between us and that star has been expanding uh, since the Big Bang 13.7 years ago. So uh, the question could be raised, if nature can do it, can we potentially do it uh, from a human perspective? Uh, so this was what motivated uh, Miguel Cuvier to come up with a, a math model that kind of captured this idea within the uh, 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 mathematical constraints of general relativity. And so I'm not going to go through all the math with you. I'm just going to give you a physical interpretation of it. Uh, you kind of see that in a little cartoon there to the right. Uh, so Miguel put together a model that kind of said if you uh, distribute a um, if you distribute a ring of uh, exotic matter or negative vacuum energy or negative pressure uh, in Oops. if you distribute uh, a ring of negative vacuum energy around uh, in this fashion. Uh, it'll actually cause a, a response in space time so that you form uh, what's been called a warp bubble. So this distribution of uh, negative vacuum energy in this toroidal form uh, creates a little bit of a bubble. Uh, and so that little football shape uh, that you see in the center of the spacecraft, that would be where you know, the robotic uh, equipment would be, stuff that you want to keep uh, uh, in very quiescent space because that's where uh, uh, the clock rates inside the bubble have the same rate of time as the clock rates would have, say, in mission uh, the, there are no tidal forces, uh, and the uh, local proper acceleration alpha uh, is zero. So you're te technically in zero G, uh, and when you turn the field on, the crew doesn't go slamming against the bulkhead and killing everybody on board and making for a very short and sad episode of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> now, it turns out that uh, uh, after uh, Miguel published his paper, a lot of people went through and started to calculate how, how much energy does it take to do this, uh, this little toy model. Uh, so folks went through and started doing some calculating, uh, and the energy estimates that came back were all colossally large, huge numbers. Uh, and I think the, the best number prior to 2011 was done by a colleague of mine, Dr. Richard Abusi. Uh, he reduced the amount of exotic matter to something about the size of Jupiter. Uh, so that really renders the idea uh, completely impossible. Uh, while it's an interesting mathematical toy model, it's not something we can achieve with human technology.